Podcast 3 of the Upper Limb series, the auxilla. This podcast is going to detail the boundaries of the auxilla, which is an important space located in the upper limb. So the auxilla is a roughly pyramidal shaped space that is located between the glenohumeral joint and the shaft of the humerus laterally and the thoracic wall medially. It is a particularly important space and can be referred to as the gateway to the upper limb, as it provides a transitional area between the neck and arm. The auxilla has an apex, four walls, the anterior, posterior, lateral and medial walls, and a base. So let's detail the structures that form these boundaries. The apex is formed by the cervico-auxiliary canal, which is a pathway running between the clavicle, the first rib, and the upper edge of the scapula. It is an important region as it allows the auxiliary artery and vein, along with the trunks of the brachial plexus, to pass between the neck and the upper limb. The base of the auxilla is the skin that joins the thoracic wall to the upper limb, and it has four sides, anteriorly and posteriorly, there are the auxiliary folds, and these are the extensions of skin that connect this upper limb to the thoracic wall. And you can grasp these between your fingers by putting your fingers into your armpit and pinching the skin in front and behind. Laterally, there is the shaft of the humerus, and medially, there is the thoracic wall. Connecting the apex of the auxilla to the base are four walls, the medial, anterior, lateral and posterior walls. The medial wall of the auxilla is formed from the superior four ribs of the thoracic wall and the overlying serratus anterior muscle. The anterior wall of the auxilla is formed by the two pectoral muscles, pectoralis major and pectoralis minor, and extends inferiorly to the anterior auxiliary fold. The lateral wall of the auxilla is the smallest of the four walls and is formed purely by the intertubercular groove of the humerus. Finally, there is the posterior wall. This is the most complex of the walls and is formed by three muscles that were detailed in podcast two of this series. These are from superior to inferior, subscapularis, teres major and latissimus dorsi. The inferior limit of the posterior wall is the posterior auxiliary fold, which remember can be grasped between your fingers and your thumb as the skin that extends from the thoracic wall to the upper limb. The posterior wall is characterized by having three spaces, which are formed by the muscles extending from the thoracic wall and scapula to the humerus. These spaces are important as they form a passageway to allow nerves and blood vessels to pass from the auxilla to structures surrounding the shoulder region. The three spaces are the quadrangular space, the triangular space, and the lateral triangular space. So let's detail the boundaries and contents of these three spaces. So firstly, the quadrangular space. This is a passageway for the auxiliary nerve and posterior circumflex artery and vein. It allows them to extend from the auxilla to the deltoid muscle and superior aspect of the humerus. As its name suggests, the quadrangular space is bounded on four sides by subscapularis superiorly, teres major inferiorly, the long head of triceps medially, and the surgical neck of the humerus laterally. The second space I want to detail is the triangular space. This is located medial to the quadrangular space and is bounded on three sides, subscapularis superiorly, teres major inferiorly, and the long head of triceps medially. It is a small space that allows a circumflex scapular artery to leave the auxilla and supply the scapula. The final space on the posterior wall is the lateral triangular space, sometimes called the triangular interval. This passageway allows the radial nerve and profunda brachii artery, or the deep artery of the arm, to extend from the auxilla 
to the posterior compartment of the arm and as its name suggests is bounded on three sides teres major superiorly the humerus laterally and the long head of triceps medially so finally in this podcast i want to mention that the auxilla and therefore its contents are particularly vulnerable to damage when the arm is fully abducted as this exposes the nerves blood vessels and lymphatics running through the auxilla to be damaged by fully adducting the arm the humerus can protect this contents so in conclusion the auxilla is a pyramidal space that connects the neck to the upper limb it is bounded by four walls and has an apex and a base and is important in transmitting nerves and blood vessels from the two regions in the next podcast number 4 i'm going to look at the nerve supply to the upper limb via the brachial plexus